Um, hi guys, uh, today I want to talk about the documentation required for the carriage of dangerous goods on ships. So the first document I want to talk about is the document of compliance, which uh, gives details of construction and equipment required to be carried on ships uh, carrying dangerous goods. So the wording of the document is such that uh, the administration, which is the flag state, shall provide the ships with an appropriate document as evidence of compliance with the requirement of this regulation. So the document of compliance is often uh, referred to as the DO as well. And uh, special requirements are laid down in it regarding uh, what kind of water supplies, sources of ignition, detection system, ventilation arrangements, uh, bilge pumping systems, and personal protection, uh, portable fire extinguishers, insulation of machinery, space boundaries, and water space systems are available on ships both under deck and for on deck carriage of dangerous goods. The other documents that are required for the carriage of dangerous goods includes uh, the shipping documents that are prepared by the shipper. We shall include a signed certificate for declaration that the shipment is properly marked, packed, labeled and placarded as appropriate and in proper and good condition of carriage. For container ships or for containers, the above certificate may be combined with a signed container packing certificate. Uh, the certificate should also display the correct technical name and description as per the class of the IMDG goods. Uh, a special manifest should also be carried giving IMDG class uh, IMDG stands for International Maritime Dangerous Goods, in case you didn't know that. The location on board and a detailed storage plan, which should be separate from the general cargo manifest. So for container ships, uh, these are the additional requirements. So if you have never sailed on container ships, according, al along with the normal manifest, we also get a special manifest for the IMDG goods. And that you have to keep separately. Also, you have to sometimes include it in the fire control plan as well. Additionally, for ships carrying explosives, a letter of approval is required from a competent authority uh, of the country of manufacture regarding class of goods, the compatibility group assigned, and the proper shipping name. Uh, the document should contain the following statement that shipment under this entry approved by the competent authority of and then the name of the authority. So that should be included in the letter of approval when you're carrying explosives on ships. Uh, for certain cargoes, alternatively, commonly used names can be used in place of a uh, correct technical name. Uh, for explosives, and I continue with the explosives part, uh, a net explosive mass of the contents should be provided. For some explosives, a minimum water or phlegmatizer content is specified. Such substances to be transported only with special authorization granted by a competent authority of the country of origin. Packaging also to be duly authorized by a competent authority. Uh, packages and CTUs, that is container transport units, having class one goods should be marked, labeled and placarded as required. And uh, these requirements applies to containers that carry explosives, uh, solid dangerous goods in bulk, shipborne ship barges, as well as cargo carried on weather decks.